Hi everyone, uh, my name is Lynn and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So today we have a really exciting topic to cover, but before we dive in, I want to emphasize that I am not a physician, a scientist, a researcher, uh, a dermatologist. I am a middle-aged woman dealing with hair loss and have had some success with regrowth and I'm sharing everything that I'm learning in hopes that it encourages you along your journey as well. So let's dive in. So we know hair loss can be a challenging experience especially since many times it's tied to other health issues. So it's natural and normal for us to identify potential solutions. Keep in mind, I'm always going to advocate getting professional help as, and, and go honestly until you find the right person for you. Do not take no for an answer, um, regardless of how they push back, then go to the next one, uh, because I think it's really important to get uh, professional care while you're on this journey. It's also really important to tamp down inflammation as quickly as possible to help stop the spreading, regardless of what type um, of hair loss you might be dealing with. Plus, I'm a really curious person. Like I like to nerd out about this kind of stuff. And so I'm always going to pray, ask, seek, and knock when it comes to uncovering things that might be helpful for us on this journey. So when I stumbled upon this recent article, I was like, I got to share this information. I was hesitant because I know many of us, most of us, we want to, we kind of want a quick fix. The reality is if you've been on this journey for any time, you realize there, there really isn't a quick fix. Now, can God heal miraculously? 100%. I 100% believe that. And I also know he may choose a different route. And so for many of us, he's chosen a different route. So I think there's an opportunity, you know, my journey has been, well, let's, let's see what, what is there to learn? What is there to understand? What is there to, to comprehend about this? So if you Google cinnamon and hair loss, you'll see a ton of articles. And what they actually do is tell you that it helps scalps, it helps regrowth, but it doesn't tell you how or why. This study, which is literally hot off the presses as of February 24, is starting to begin the process of understanding how and what might be taking place. And that is exciting. So researchers at the Yokohama National University in Japan have been studying hair regrowth. Um, and they've been studying the effects of cinnamic acid, um, which is a component of Chinese cinnamon. Oh, also, if you see me look down, it's because you know I have notes, because I have notes. Um, in their study, they discovered that cinnamic acid can help support hair follicle growth in a laboratory setting. Keep in mind, it's a laboratory setting and might be a potential avenue for combating hair loss. So how does it work? Let's learn this together. I'm going to put up a screenshot here and as I talk through some of this, so you'll see the mechanism of how it's working. So apparently cinnamic acid interacts with oxytocin um, and key hair growth genes promoting hair follicle development and cycling. So these experiments were done on dermal papilla cells um, and hair follicle organoids. Hear me out. A hair follicle organoid, organoid mimics natural hair follicles in a lab setting. So these were not done on... Uh, from human beings, they were done um, on uh, cells that were cultured or cells that mimic natural hair follicles. So oxytocin enhances genes related to hair growth, but because the molecule is large, it can't be used for hair treatment. Cinnamic acid, however, is similar to oxytocin, and that's what, that's what was explored by these Japanese researchers. They found that testing varying concentrations of cinnamic acid on cell cultures increases oxytocin receptors and hair growth genes. The researchers also determined that the most effective method for testing hair growth treatment is actually going to involve using patient hair follicles in culture. Long story short, they're, they're starting to find the mechanism of how um, cinnamic acid can support the growth of hair follicles in culture. As always, additional research is going to be needed. Um, but do you, number one, I do, I'm curious, do you use topical hair oils and what has been your experience? I have purchased my share of topical hair oils, but I think the thing that really kind of why I haven't used them as consistently is 
I wanted to handle, not handle, I wanted to get a handle on what was happening internally because I knew that it wasn't necessarily hair care practices that were causing, it was something going on internal, again, with that inflammation. And so the reason why I haven't used them a lot is just number one, I have a hard time being consistent with it. Um, but two, because I really wanted to focus on more of the internal side, but I think, and I think now that I'm seeing some of the science behind it, and, and granted, I know people who've used hair growth oils and they are working tremendously for them. So that's why I'm interested to hear what, you know, what you all think works. And there's a lot of stuff out about rosemary oil. There's things out about peppermint oil. The curiosity, the curiosity in me is always interested in kind of the how, how and why and what's, what's going on. Um, and as I learn and see more science around it, I'm like starting to think, oh, these things kind of make a little bit more sense as to how it's working. I'm also going to link in all of these articles, plus the other general articles that just kind of say cinnamon works for hair, hair and scalp treatments. So more research is needed. They didn't really talk, go into detail about the dosage or what amount that they use. They didn't, I don't think I saw that in the actual um, the article that I saw. It probably isn't the actual study. What's interesting to me is that it's exciting that there is more research taking place, whether it's in the US, where I don't care where it's taking place, but that research is actually taking place to help understand what is happening and what are some potential solutions. If you've been around for a while, you kind of know that I'm going to try to find like, well, if it's in cinnamon, what else is cinnamic acid in? And are there other ways that you that we can sort of we can ingest it? So here's what I found. Cinnamic acid is also found in various fruits and vegetables like citrus, grapes, cocoa, spinach, celery and Brussels sprouts and broccoli, which of course we all know also have anti-inflammatory properties. So what's our conclusion? The conclusion is there's more research that's taking place. The next thing that I think, honestly, the way I think, and if you, again, if you've been around here, you know, my approach is honestly, I'm like praying, Lord, give them wisdom, give them insight, help us um, to learn more about some possible healing properties and things that would help us. Um, the other thing is, is before you, if you, you know, if you're not using them, highly recommend getting uh, medical help, trichologist, nutritionist, really, before you start adding things to your regimen, really do, do your homework, you know, before we add a whole bunch of things to our regimens. Um, but also there is something to be maybe a little hopeful for as the research starts to uncover potential paths to hair regrowth. And always remember, you're not alone in this journey. Live well, live blessed, nourish your crown, and I'll see you in the next video.